This will be one more in what is turning into something of a series of little nuggets, little revelations, you might even put it, that God has placed throughout the entirety of Scripture indicating who He is. Because my wife and I believe He is a person, and as such, He likes to get to know us as a person. And sometimes He does it in a subtle way to see if you're paying attention, just like our friends and people in different kinds of relationships will say something to see if the other one is noticing or paying attention to what we're saying. Not so much as a test, you can call it that I guess, but just to see who, who is paying attention to what I'm saying. Does this person notice my hurt? Does this person notice what is important to me? Does this person even notice me at all? And I think that's significant, that's huge with God, that he just from the beginning, at the very least, he would like to be noticed for who he is. So here's one from Luke chapter 17, and, and it describes a scene where Jesus comes upon ten lepers. Now I'm just going to cut to the chase here. They cry out to him to have pity on them, and starting in verse 14, it says, And seeing them, he said to them, Going, show yourselves to the priests. And it happened, in their going, they were cleansed. And one of them, seeing that he was cured, returned, glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, thanking him. And he was a Samaritan. I don't know if you're big on grammar and English structure and all that, but there's a thing called the antecedent. He just said he came, returned, glorifying God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at his feet. The last person mentioned was God. He fell at his feet. This is something that I believe the writer and God through the writer throws in there so we can see and either believe it or reject it and embrace our religion or, like I say, embrace him and have that intimacy, have that thing that's unique to you and him that is independent of religion or any religious teachings because religious teachings won't show you that. Maybe you don't even know what I just said or what this just said, but I'm just throwing it there. Look at it for yourself. The words are here. You can see it. Jesus is revealing himself for who he is. Moving on to that same chapter, just down a few verses, starting in verse 20. It says, And being questioned by the Pharisees as to when the kingdom of God comes, he, that's Jesus, answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, Lo here or lo there, for, the be for behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. I know some versions say the kingdom of God is within you, and you can make that argument, that's fine, that is one of the definitions, but I believe this is accurate, because again, he's telling them who he is. They're all saying, when is the kingdom going to get here? When is he going to come? When is the Lord? When is the Messiah? When is this? When is that? And he's in his own subtle way for those who let's, let's accept on a basic thing. I hope we can agree that if someone is here with you, you can reject that they're here with you or you can accept that they're here with you. And especially with God, if God is there and you want to deny that he's there, you can deny that he's there. If he wants to be there in a subtle way, and he was here in a subtle way, they're demanding, when is this going to happen? And he's saying, it's, it's in your midst. The kingdom is in your midst because I'm here. I'm the one that is the kingdom of God, for he is the kingdom of God. That, who, that is who our God is. He embodies all things. And as far as we go, the important things is those who are going to live forever, we are all in him through belief in him, through faith in him, through wanting to see him, and then we see him. So those who wanted to see him saw him. And they didn't need to ask questions anymore because they knew they were, with, they were in the kingdom. They were with them already. In Jesus' name, amen.